Coach Matthew Nestor, yep. martial artist, professional jiu-jitsu coach. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quite a few years now, actually. I just watched your class. What was it? Two days. This last uh, week and Thursday, yeah, really great class, and uh, and amateur MMA fighter, yes, MMA, it's my it's my thing. Awesome, man. How uh, how long have you been training martial arts? Oh, martial arts since I was probably two years old. Two years old, so nineteen years and counting. Nineteen years and counting. Yep. What was the first martial art you did? Um. They had a karate class at my preschool. Uh, it was like an hour, maybe it was like three times a week. Mm. Um, and I don't know, I just kind of fell in love with kicking stuff. Cool. And then just spiraled from there into MMA. Nice. And uh, you told your mom, you, or, how, or how did you get going uh, training like at a school? Um, after preschool, we uh, we were at some, it was like a little school event. Mm. for my school and they hosted a whole bunch of like companies to come in mm. one of them was a karate dojo nice and they let me like break a board they got you yeah they got us they got us for the monthly you know uh and then yeah since then i was uh i was there it's actually right across the street oh yeah uh that little white building oh really big five. Oh no way i was there for like 10 years no way oh wow mm. i actually tried a class at Legacy while it was uh, in Gracie Baja still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got my ass kicked and I didn't like it. <laughs> How old were you at the time? Probably like seven or eight. Mm. And then we came back when I was 15. That's when I stayed. Okay. Wow. Cool. So you were, were you're from Burbank? Mm -hmm. Born and raised? Yep. Uh, born in Burbank. Uh, moved to Virginia from like six months old until I was like three. And came back. Mm. So pretty much. Yeah, in your, your whole life. life. Nice. And how long have you been watching UFCs? I think my first one, I was probably six, I want to say. Okay. Um, but my grandma at the time when we were living with her, she would turn it off if there was, like, blood. So I didn't see a whole fight until I was about 10. Okay. She yeah. didn't like the blood, so she shut it off. Yeah, she didn't want me watching it, but uh, they'd let me watch, like, Dr. Miami and stuff. So, I don't know. <laughs> what would you, th you think of the UFC 300 this weekend? Uh, it was great. It was great. That was uh, that Max Holloway fight. It's probably the best one I've ever seen. Best knockout you've ever seen? I think best fight I've ever really? seen, just in general. What, is, what about the other, what, the other ones? Other ones, I mean... Alex Pajeda, is, we all expected that. But the way he pushed, like he got kicked in the nuts, and then he was like. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I don't know about that. Pushed, but <laughs> he's like, I'm good. And then, goes, <laughs> and then the next thing he does is knock him out. Yeah, that was a that was a crazy, it's just yesterday. No, not yesterday. Saturday. Two days ago. Two days it's pretty ago. crazy. The whole thing. We were here from, I mean, Kevin, we were here from like, I think two setting up watched mm. every single fight all the way through uh yeah it was a it was a lot of fun nice nice yeah man UFC so when when did you uh when were you thinking that hey I want to do this in the cage when did that start uh, the time I was like 10 really I, right after I saw my first the first full fight um I think it was I know Anderson Silva was fighting on the card I'm not sure who might have fought. Uh, might have been the. No, it wasn't Chael Sonnen. I don't remember, but I just remember I liked his style because it mimicked like. It was long. Like, the karate style, mm. and mm. I thought it was really cool. So, uh, ever since then, I wrote in my fifth grade yearbook. In oh. ten years, I'll be fighting MMA or something like that. And you stuck to it. Yep. And nice. now here we are. What did your mom think about you? pursuing this <laughs> um at first she she didn't know like what to put me in so we just stayed with karate um but she said looking back now she wishes that like she would have kept me in jiu-jitsu since that first day because uh 
um, like Superman. I would have been like one of those, you know, the child mm -hmm. prodigy, so to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it all worked out. Mm -hmm. It was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are some of the the mentors uh, that you you like a shout out? To people that have helped you along the way. Uh, my coach Mike, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, been with him since I was fifteen. I think I was here for about two months before, and then I met him, and then ever since we've been been training. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, also just you, you know, being here, meeting you my first day in the gym. Uh, we were talking about it the other day, how, uh, like, you know, I bet everyone comes in and says, like, oh, I'm going to be the next, I'm going to be in the UFC, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I think you told me, like, just commit, keep training, and just show up, and that's what I've been doing. That's it. Yeah. And then Professor Joey was, you know, he kind of, he's like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> he's like, "Not, not everyone makes it." And I'm like, "I know." So. Nice. Yeah. That's PJ, it. PJ kept it a, a little too real, you know. <laughs> Anybody can do it, right? So why am I, no. who am I to say? Uh, just, yeah. You know, stick with it. Stay, stay consistent. Yep. And then step by step, right? Exactly. Yeah, just step at a time. Train every day. That's it. Uh, what has martial arts done for you, as a as a as a man, as a young man? Uh, definitely discipline, um, especially in like my first martial art, karate. Uh, we would get hit with like bamboo sticks if we acted up, or just do like push ups, wall sits all that kind of stuff. Um, and then once I got here, I was 15, so I got put straight into the uh, adult class, mm -hmm. which kind of shaped me up a little bit too. Mm -hmm. I couldn't um, mess around because, you know, all the adults pay for their membership and my mom was paying mine. So I'm not gonna waste my mom's money or these other people. Yeah. So yeah, it uh, definitely shaped me up pretty quick. How do you compare Karate to jujitsu, as far as the training. Uh, I don't think it's even close. Yeah, uh, karate is a lot more form, and I mean, still a lot of sparring, kind of like we do, like rolling jujitsu. But uh, yeah, they focus a lot on katas and forms and like meditation, mm. which I never really got into that the meditation kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I just like to spar pretty much you wanted to fight right you wanted to do yeah that. i just wanted to just wanted to fight i would get in fights at school kind of i mean i wouldn't start them obviously but i would have to finish them so hmm. i never never liked all the forms you stuff. know to, to be fair right to like just just generalizing right things like that it depends on the school you can't just say karate you can't just say jujitsu you can't just mm -hmm. say right generalizing the school one and then two like the person's goal, right? Like men, man, some some guys they want like the meditation they want. They're doing karate or they're doing things for a different reason. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So so like you wanted to fight, so th maybe that was it wasn't the right spot for you to to the it it wasn't it at the beginning to maybe make give you yeah. discipline, give you give you like you know a routine probably, mm -hmm. right? You show up these days, be yeah. consistent. Like it at the beginning, it was a lot of. Obviously, they're not gonna let you spar your first mm -hmm. your first day. So, um, but like once I started getting older, they kind of let me like veer off a little bit mm -hmm. to where, like on the tests, so to say, for the belts, I wouldn't have to do as many forms, but I'd have to spar double the amount. Okay. Yeah. So they which, adjusted it for you, which yeah, you needed more of. Yeah. Exactly. So, which helped a lot. I stayed in there a lot longer than I probably would have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's it. That's it. They were good teachers then, huh? They were good 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 people. Uh yeah, pretty good. Most of the most of the time, yeah. Are they still around? Uh no, he actually they're not in that location anymore. Yeah, no, COVID shut him down and then the main instructor actually he passed away, I oh, think. Oh no. Four years ago, three years ago, something oh, wow. like that. Okay. Uh he had like a heart attack or something oh, wow. out of nowhere. What was what was the what was his name the main uh robert or shihan rob mm -hmm. <laughs> you know his last name 
I don't. Give him a shout out. Wow, it's crazy. I don't. Kids, huh? Yeah, I know. I was. <laughs> I just knew him as like sensei or coach or. <laughs> Good thing my name's on the side of the building, right? There. <laughs> All good. All good. But you have love and you appreciate, huh? Yeah, no, it was it, it was good. I mean, towards the end, he was a little, little upset. Picked MMA over, like, you know, the traditional, like, you know, you open up a karate school, you teach, and then that's about it. I'm like, like uh, you know, Robert Torres, right? Um, mm. He, uh, he, uh, he got his jiu-jitsu black belt, right? You got his jiu-jitsu black belt, right, as well. So, man, you have to be, you have to always be adapting and changing and yeah. keeping an open mind, right? Like Bruce Lee, right, and and learning, right, and yeah, improving he was, yourself. Uh, he's a little closed, closed-minded, mm-hmm. so especially today in age, like, yeah, things are moving so fast, right? Yeah, he kind of kind of made me pick between like karate and MMA, and I'm like, well, see ya. <laughs> So you came in. I remember. You, did you come in? Was what, was it during the pandemic? No, it was. I think it was like 2018. Okay, okay, okay. I okay. came in, um, like very end, probably like October, November. Okay. Um, and then I came pretty consistently. I feel like mm-hmm. up until beginning of 2020, pretty much when COVID hit, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, Mom freaked out a little bit, kind of kept me away until uh, you guys reopened. Yeah. I think it was, what, from March to, like, July. I was back in July. You're a, you a, you a good boy. You always uh, you listen I to know. mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he came in, yeah. And then you, uh, then, yep. to, to, to think, then you were, like, here, because you were in school at the beginning, I remember. You came here after school or whatever, right? Yeah, I was, um, I just started a uh, charter homeschool. Mm, so that's what it was. I would save all my homework for Sundays, and I would be here for probably six or seven hours Yeah, a you day. were here all day long. Yeah, I was like... Hanging uh, out with the boys and, you know, just growing up. Yeah, if anyone knows Antoine, it's kind of like Antoine before Antoine, you know? Where's Antoine? He's Man... <laughs> Being Antoine, <laughs> man. So uh, how did it, how did it start with you teaching uh, jujitsu classes? Um, oh, I started in the office first. You did? Yeah. Uh, Krista and Alan actually trained me. Okay. Uh, Alan Apple. Um, Alan Apple. And uh, yeah, I started with that for maybe a year, I think. Mm. And then for the kids' classes, uh, two of the coaches moved, uh, Lorelai and uh, Izzy. So oh, yeah. I told Erica, like, hey, if you guys need help, I can, like, step in until you find someone. And then, what, like, three months later, she just asked me to come on, and that was that. And now you teach you here almost every day. <laughs> yeah, every, every single day. Mm-hmm. Training, um, teaching. Living, yep. living the lifestyle. Eating acai, yeah, all day. What do you think about acai? It's good. Everyone, check out Acai Jungle if you have Acai yet. Jungle Cafe. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> shout out, Adit. Acai Jungle. Um, what's next? Uh, I'm trying to look looking to fight in July, um, against the guy Brian actually beat. Okay. Uh, he that's that's good. Yeah. He messaged me, I think like a day after the fight, asking to fight in July. So okay, I'm down. Nice. Told, told Ryan about it, so we'll see. Where is it gonna be? I'd imagine Commerce, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice. try to get Brian on that card too. Nice, nice, nice. Or maybe Combat Jiu Jitsu before that. I'm combat in, I'm, Jiu Jitsu. I'm interested in that. I'm very interested. Do they uh, do they use um, non black belts? Uh, Irish just did one, actually. Uh, from it, West was Adams. it was it combat? I believe so. It was. Or was with, it another tournament? It was with submersive. Submersive, yeah. But and I think combat doing, combat usually uses like higher profile. Usually, or, or I think. Might have to be pro. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll do it. You're down. I want to do it. Yeah, I think my my style kind of translates pretty well. For that 
I remember you finally made your, uh, you know, your fight, your MMA debut after a lot, a lot of years. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that you won, by the way. Um, yep. And with your mom was there, Mike, and it was very emotional. Oh, yeah, the guy, uh, meth head, didn't want to show uh, up. No, 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 just, just not, not, not that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> no, but, but, like, it was cool. It was cool, like, yeah. the good side. You know, yeah, the Gamos didn't show up, right? He didn't show up for yeah. the thing, and then he came in for the weigh-in, and then he's like, I'm not going to come in. Something like mm -hmm. that, and he finally did, right? Um, but... Uh, it was really cool to see like all the support you had from the legacy community, like all your family, friends, your mom. Um, you know, I know she she knows how hard you as a <laughs> as a parent, right? Like your mom knows how hard you worked, how many years you've put in yeah. and dedicated to like this moment. So it was really special, and I, I appreciated that that moment sharing that with you guys. Yeah, um, I think we got Kevin. Something. You know, <laughs> your yeah, my, my your hype guy. man. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah, man. It takes a team, man. You know, it's an individual thing, but it's it's a team. You gotta have a team. Yeah, me and Kevin sold, I think, about like ninety tickets for that that fight. I think mm -hmm. I sold the most tickets besides the professional main event. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that that meant a lot, especially like obviously winning your debut fight in front of all your like your the whole gym pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know. Um. Yeah, it was dope. It was really cool. It was really cool to have you in my corner, you know, you and Mike uh, working together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just want to I just want to get back in there, get a another win. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Yeah, and it's pretty cool uh, having up next fight fighting, right? As yeah. uh, cuz back in the day we were trying to figure out how you're going to get experience, right? How you're going to get fights. And yeah. Mike was looking at Arizona and some of these, you know, um, mm -hmm. out of state promotions right because there wasn't really too much here yeah especially during the lockdown too there was really nothing for amateurs professional it's a little different because they have more money to do shows mm -hmm. you know um but arizona was open so he had some connects out there some in miami too we were looking mm -hmm. all over the place and then uh yeah like up next kind of just like fell in our lap yeah, but it helps to have like a lot of support, and you know, as a promoter, you want they want you to sell tickets, right? And so yeah. that makes sense for everybody, yeah. for you too, because then it's, it's yeah, I mean, feels good to have all the support out there. Especially now, they know I can sell a lot of tickets, yeah. so they they want to. I mean, it does help me get fights a, l a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. for it sure. Doesn't make it easier finding opponents, but it makes it easier getting on cards, you know. Up next fighting, right? They mm -hmm. they're they're crushing it, they're killing it. Yeah. They're How do you feel? How do you feel for about fighting for up next fighting? Um, I I love it. I mean, I eventually want to go pro with them. Uh, you know, I think they're just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. I think they're gonna get up to, you know, the level of like, um, A one combat very soon, mm -hmm. if if they're not already there. Um, hopefully there's a fight pass deal mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. in the near future um but yeah i think it's a it's the next one mm -hmm. yeah 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 their production the just the com little community they've built right within their organization with the staff and everybody yeah i actually worked with them uh before i ever fought oh i worked a couple of their events with uh with ellen actually oh really um yeah so while they were looking for opponents and no one would fight me they would bring me in and like just uh let us work the event kind of watch fights mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. so it was dope yeah yeah i built a relationship before i ever even got to like um what do you call it fight for them does george do all the matchmaking uh for the professionals gotcha uh for the amateurs it's ryan buckner gotcha yeah Nice. George has been around forever supporting the local a, guys. He's an OG. He's telling me a story about Jalen Turner after my after my last fight. Uh -huh. How he uh, he was trying to cut too much weight, kind of like I did <laughs> this last one. Mm -hmm. So he told me just, you know, stick with the weight class you know you can make. Mm -hmm. and just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. Well, it's been a, it's been a pleasure watching you grow up as a 
as a young man, <laughs> you know, from, you know, you were a kid. You know, yeah. You were a kid. You were literally a kid. And to see you, you know, hang out and, you know, live the jujitsu lifestyle, you know, that you, you know, you, the homeschooling supported that, right? Because it's like, it's a community, right? And you're hanging yeah. out with everybody and you're just becoming one of the, one of the guys, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it, it helped a lot. Uh, it allowed me to be here for seven hours a day, you know? I would start, first class would be Joey's 6.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then I would go home, sleep, come back for Nogi, 10 a.m., do 11 a.m. Muay Thai, noon Jiu Jitsu. And then I'd come back at night for maybe one or two more classes. Mm -hmm. So either Muay Thai or uh, Nogi, if it was Tuesday or Thursday. Nice, nice, nice. I'd be here from 6.30 a.m. all the way till like 8.30 at night. Nice, nice. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I did that six months straight, pretty much. And then I got started getting little injuries. I'm like, I'm gonna start slowing it down just a tiny bit. Yeah, train smart, right? Yeah, train train quality quality training too. What yeah. about the Alta Alta MMA? <laughs> Let's talk about that. Alta, yeah, that was seven a.m. Crew. Yeah, that was that was a hard one to wake up for at first. Uh, Can you explain what Alta MMA was? So Alta is, it was called Wimp to Warrior before. Um, I like that name better, actually. But uh, you know, it takes people off the couch pretty much, or little to no experience. Um, gives them six months of MMA training mm -hmm. every day, seven a.m. And after six months, you can fight if you decide to. If not. Um, most of the time, they just continue their training. Mm -hmm. After that, yeah. whether it's in MMA or through jujitsu or Muay Thai or whatever, you just, yeah, you, yeah, you, you continue the lifestyle. Yeah, any pretty they'll stay in combat sports pretty much. Mm -hmm. And you had you start you had that first crew, and how many guys fought uh, and, and ended up fighting from that first original crew? Guys, people that had no experience got in the cage. Yeah, so we had. I think the original number we started the class with was probably 24, mm -hmm. 25. Mm -hmm. And we whittled down until like the last six weeks to like seven people, I think eight people. Mm -hmm. um, we had Sean, George, other George, Khalil, Ellen, Declan, Starcy. I think that's about it. So yeah, seven. Mm -hmm. um, and then five of them fought. They got. Two of them fought each other. <laughs> it's amazing, though. It's right? a good fight. Yeah. 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 Is that is that that class still going on? Yep. MMA, 7 a.m. every morning. Uh, yeah, we actually got two other guys from there to go fight. Well, three now. Uh, Daryl's next weekend, 420. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, we're slowly, slowly picking it up, you know, mm -hmm. slowly getting more people in. You have a good, good big open. Uh, MMA sparring day, right on Sunday. Yeah, those are those are getting packed now. Uh, Sundays at noon. Everyone's welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, even uh, just yesterday we had some here at Legacy Burbank. Yep, we had some people from uh, Bakersfield uh, came in and they brought their these two little brothers. They were like eight, and they were sparring each other too. And some Muay Thai. It was really really cool to see actually. Nice, nice. What what what's it been like being a coach for, or you know helping these these guys that had no experience you know learn basic things right like hip escaping and just basic punches and taking them yeah. to a cage a cage fight. We got kind of lucky. A lot of the people we got had some prior experience. So, mm -hmm. like Khalil did some MMA training a little bit like five years before. Declan's just Scottish, so he's crazy you know just kind of like nico <laughs> Carrillo, you know uh um ellen did some stuff tall george boxed amateur for a while mm. so we we had some people that were pretty athletic already they just need to learn like honestly the little stuff mainly jujitsu though mm -hmm. the stand up part they can kind of they figured it out you know nice nice yeah and then how about teaching kids? What has been some of your, you know, uh, your, your, 
young man yourself, but you know, you've seen you've mm-hmm. it's been a lot of years now that you've helped been helping coaching kids. Yeah, about three years, mm-hmm. three and a half maybe. Mm-hmm. Um your favorite moments. Favorite oh, favorite moments probably like when a kid wins their first tournament, that's pretty cool. Or their first gold medal, pretty much. Um, oh, who was it? I think it was in a recent one, it was uh, George, little George. Mm-hmm. He won, and uh, he got off the mat. He's like, I won, I won. He was like, it, it's just, it's cool seeing that, because you see him, you know, in the gym, kind of, you know, just not winning every round, you know, but he's not like... I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. just training. They're just yeah. training a lot, and then they end up getting that first gold, and it kind of just like sparks something in them. They're like, "Oh, I want to keep doing this." Does martial arts change lives? Yeah, hundred percent. I think so. Jujitsu. Yeah, yeah jujitsu. I think any any kind of martial art. I mean, except for the fake ones, you know. But. uh <laughs> I mean, fake ones can change your life, but not in a good way. Uh, it'd be kind of like a cult. But yeah. um, I think jiu-jitsu especially, like, gives a lot of kids, like, confidence and, uh, like, guidance, I guess. If mm-hmm. they're a little older, yeah. they're kind of, like, going off on the wrong path. Yeah. I've had a couple of those in teens. Um, and, yeah, it actually uh, helped them out, you know. I mean, they're not training too much anymore, but even those, like, two months they were in here, it helped them get confidence, and the parents were telling us, uh, like, it, it it already helped, you know? Mm. Yeah. What do you think uh, has helped you to stay on stay on the mat and training all these years? Um, I think, like, trying to fight professional has just kept me... Like, j- just having, like, a goal kind of mm-hmm. at the end of the road, but not really the end of the road, you know? It's just, like, it's like a red light, you know? You get to one, okay, you pass it, you get to the next one, you know? It's just having that next, like, light kind of in your eyesight. Mm-hmm. Just kept me on the mat, honestly. Yeah. And I just like training, too, so that's another plus. What about uh, what about the lifestyle? What are your favorite parts? You said the training. Training, um, I would say. Uh, now coaching. Like before, I was coaching. I would just say training and competing, but now coaching also. Um, and then competing too. So, those are my those are my favorite things, honestly. Cool man, awesome. Mm-hmm. Look forward to. Uh, all your successes in the future, your continued success. And I appreciate everything that you do for our community and our kids and our adults and man, all as a friend, as a brother, as a, as a, like I said, as a teacher too, I appreciate all the work you're doing and, and doesn't go unnoticed. And I look forward to all you keep going and, and, and all the, all the, all the success in the world. Yeah. Thank you for a bright, bright future ahead. You know, thank you for the opportunity on the podcast at legacy just in general just thank you thank you brother so man we're uh we're hanging out we're talking uh doing a podcast after a loss yeah how does it feel to lose in mma um it, it's a little it, it's good and it's bad uh especially this one you know i didn't i didn't feel like i got outskilled so to say mm. um I think the way that I approached the fight wasn't the smartest, trying to cut more weight than I should have. Mm. Um, and also just, you know, yeah, it, it, it was... How does it feel? How does it feel, man? How does it feel? I mean, yeah. it's it's not going to feel great, but it's... You took it well after the fight. You know, yeah. So you had, like, all the support. I was like, okay, cool, he's, o- he's okay. Yeah, no. I just remember, like, when... It's de- devastating, you know. Like I remember when I was doing jujitsu, and you know, every, I was putting all everything into. When I lose, like it's like I'm, I'm devastated, you know. I really took yeah. it hard. Um, and then like my first, it was a year in the UFC, but 
it was hard, you know, because it was my first loss also. And then everybody's like watching you and then everybody criticizes you too. Yeah. Um, I mean, or they think you can see the, the people's opinions of you change. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, it's definitely not a good feeling, but it's uh, a little similar to my last fight. Mm. Um, sorry, the one before this last one, uh, where I hurt my knee. Mm. I just felt like I couldn't. In that fight, I felt like I didn't get to show mm. like what I wanted to. Mm. Um, this time, actually, it was. I said it after too. It was the most fun fight I've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, it was a good fight, man, and it could have been different, right? Yeah, you were close to uh, like every round. You almost had the submission, mm -hmm. right? And it could have totally been different. Yeah, I think that that extra five pounds, I could have really. Yeah, it, that, it it took it out of me. Um, yeah, it was good. He was a D1 wrestler. He was oh, no, skilled, he was, and it's hard with two minute rounds too. Yeah, yeah. No, so he was he was good. He was came from a good camp too. Yeah, he came from uh, Benil Dariush's gym, so mm -hmm. he's not a slouch on yeah, the ground. Yeah, you know, he's prepared. Um, he's prepared. Yeah, no, he was he, Credit, he was, he was a good opponent. Um, yeah, took the fight. You know. Yeah, he and was, it's experience for you, right? Yeah, he was the uh, only person out of ten people mm -hmm. that took the fight. So. Mm -hmm. And it was a good was fight. It was a good fight. That. Yeah, it was a good fight. Yeah, no, it's um, uh, yeah, the next guy I fight is not. I don't think he's gonna be ready, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a different story. Um, yeah, no, the this last fight it definitely sucked to to lose, but in the, I feel like the performance I put on, I was happy with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you did know? good. You did good. You know, um, yeah, you have so so much support, right? It's hard to. It's hard to be down like right away. Yeah. Like everybody's like, you know. Yeah, I know. Like even um, little little Andre ran uh, to the back mm -hmm. right after the fight. So you know you can't you can't be yeah you can't really be upset. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, but you know. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, like you're upset, but it's also like you know it doesn't. You're you're doing what you want to do. You're doing what you live in your dream. Yeah, I think if it was professional, I would definitely feel it a little more mm. um but i know it's amateur record doesn't it doesn't matter at the end of the day you know mm -hmm. so yeah and so in two years when you're in uh you're fighting pro mm -hmm. what's it gonna look like what do you see where do you see yourself in two years in two years um i think i'll still be with up next um i mean at the very least with up next if not in a higher promotion um i think i'll be undefeated not sure how many fights mm. depends who wants to fight um but yeah i think i'll for sure be one and oh in two years if not more awesome how can people find you uh instagram at matthew nestor mma uh that's it yeah awesome, brother. <laughs> thank you thank, thank you. you professor